Hello again. Now something that bugs me about my HMV162 gramophone is the tone arm is actually quite stiff, or at least this joint here. So um, this normally allows you to store the um, sound box over like this, and then you bring it over like so. And it does work, but it's, it's stiff. It's stiffer than it should be. And um, the only way I can think to actually uh, fix it is to um, remove it and uh, clean it and oil it. But um, this little bracket here is designed to stop you rotating it too fast. So there's a, a little peg there that hits this bit of the bracket there. Like so. You can hear it click. And the only way that that bracket can be removed is by removing that screw and a screw underneath, under there. And uh, also in order to be able to um, unscrew this, because I think it probably just unscrews. I have looked on the internet and just found nothing at all. But I think it probably unscrews round and round and round. Um, but it's not possible to do that because uh, it won't clear the, uh, the, the platter and the, in fact, the wooden cabinet itself. So I think the solution there is to actually remove the three screws, there's one, two, and one around the back, um, and actually take the whole tone arm assembly off and uh, sort it out uh, in my uh, workshop. Well, a bit of a technical hitch. I have unscrewed this screw here and it has turned into uh, a bolt. And actually that looks uh, quite M4 um, so I had some severe doubts that these were the original fastenings anyway um, but it looks like that um, the nut on the end of that has just fallen down inside and I did hear it um, ping off as I was unscrewing it so I'm going to have to dismantle this a bit more and see if I can find the nut and um, avoid the same thing happening with the other two. Well the nut's been uh, recovered but it gives uh, us an opportunity to uh, have a look inside and you can see on one hand just how simple this gramophone is and it's just basically a horn that goes from the uh, tone arm down and round and, and up to uh, this bit here. But that, if I open the front doors, you can see it's all in there. So, um, so it's very simple, but it's also very impressive. It's basically a great big horn in a box. Okay, well I've got it in the workshop now. So uh, there's uh, quite a few screws and stuff um, which I've not really examined. I mean, obviously there's some holding on this bit here, which is part of the automatic stop. There's a hole here. There was a little screw that fitted in there, but quite loose. Um, but it seems to be some sort of stop um, that stops the uh, tone arm rotating too much. So um, I'm going to have to have a look at that. As I've mentioned before, a lot of the screws on this uh, gramophone are clearly not the original. Um, I have a feeling that maybe when it was being restored at some point somebody uh, managed to lose all the screws or possibly um, they were too corroded um, so uh, had to be replaced. But essentially um, there's a lot of things, a lot of little things which are not really quite right with this. Anyway, um, I've got some plus gas. Let's get it in the camera shot there fast release. Um, I'm going to give this a very uh, quick go. Uh, first of all I'm just going to try some on a bit of the chrome that doesn't, uh, that doesn't show. I say chrome, it might not be chrome, it might be nickel plate but, uh, but for the sake of argument let's call it chrome. So a bit there, wipe a bit underneath there. I have actually used this on the um, uh, speed um, display uh, cover which I've shown in a previous video and it worked fine on that and actually there's no sign of any problems, um, it's not like it's affecting the surface in any way there. A little drop on the two screws. A 
let it sit for a moment or two. I'm hoping these two screws are the same. Right. There we go, that's off. So there's a possibility that there might be some nasty ball bearing mechanism in here ready to ping out and uh, just generally make my, uh, my day very sad. Um, but what I'm going to do is just put a bit more plus gas in there. I've got this old paint tray here, just really to try and catch anything that might drop out. But yes, that's definitely unscrewing. You can see immediately on the bit of uh, paper towel that there's a, a lot of dirt has come off there. So that's old oil. You may be able to see there that uh, at the end of the screw thread is actually uh, brassy coloured because this is going to be um, chrome or nickel plate, uh, plated brass. Um, so that may be where or it may just be the way it was made. Right, well it really feels like it's about to come out now. I say there's about two centimeters of thread. Moment of truth. And there we are. It's released. Okay, so I've given the pieces a, a reasonable clean. Um, I haven't gone overboard, so there are still some traces of the original oil there. Um, but I've uh, picked out uh, quite a bit of the sort of dried lubricant, and um, I've also test fitted them back together again. So um, I know they fit together uh, well, and uh, I think with a little bit of lubrication, they should actually uh, function together as a tone arm better than it did before. So I'm going to use a little bit of uh, white grease or artificial grease. This is stuff that um, is designed to be used for bike. I bought it many years ago and I've sort of decanted some into a different container. So I can't show you the original container, but I'm just going to uh, put some on the threads with a little screwdriver. Don't need a great deal, I shouldn't think. Maybe just wipe that round with a bit of uh, paper towel. Hopefully this is enough grease. So I put it on just really the end and I'm expecting it to sort of work its way down through the threads as I screw it in. That does feel pretty smooth. It's not it's not completely floppy, but it is smooth, there's no juddering. Now when I screwed the uh, the front bit back in um, I actually had a couple of choices as to how far I screwed it in um, and I've uh, gone for uh, one turn less than uh, it would actually go um, because it just gives it just that little bit more movement um, and I can't see any reason why um, you wouldn't want this bit to be as free as possible partly because um, if the uh, record is warped in any way 
um, it's going to be this bit here that is actually going to move when the the needle is pushed up by the record. Right, it's all back together again now. The uh, tone arm joint is now very, very smooth. So we just try a little burst of this record. And you can see that works just fine. Okay, and that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to Mr. RG Stuff.